Okay, we are going deep, deep into the archives for this episode. Danny, Raj, and I have Donovan Pannone. Donovan, say hi. Hi, hey. <laughs> um, I'm going to start off before we get rolling here with a, uh, a little musical intro. <laughs> <laughs> oh, dear. <laughs> You guys hear that? Oh, no, I can So I want to ask Raj and Danny, that was Rollout by Ludacris, if, if everybody couldn't hear. Um, do you guys know why I played that song? There's going to be some random video we did with Raj at some on point. a Saturday night. Losing <laughs> <laughs> no. his clothes. Because Donovan and I used to use that song to pump ourselves up every morning. We yep. were always the early ones in. And we'd get that thing going and we were doing the rally. That was the rally for sales. That rally. It like really it. was. <laughs> and then okay. we got a news and then we had a new song later too, but we might get to that. Which was that? Um, in Zona Light days, we started playing with, during the Red Lobster pitch. Me <laughs> and Tony Kennard played uh, Lose Yourself by Eminem like over and over and over again. <laughs> Tony Kennard. Pumped up the Red Lobster. We will, we will get into that. Um, so for those that don't know Donovan, um, Donovan and his wife, Jenny, were um, two of the first people to join us in early, early in Spun Logic. Um, Donovan, you should really have co-founder by your name as you associate yourself with Spun Logic because you were, oh, we, you had, were there. we had that chance. We had that chance. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe we'll talk about that. <laughs> yeah. All right. So why don't we get into it? So, so we, what year did you first come into contact with with Spun Logic, I was thinking actually, Danny, weren't you doing deep blue stuff in the basement? Uh, I feel like it was at the gym. I feel like it was all gym. Okay, it was all gym. Yeah, it was either that or like very early in in that public space in Colony Square, right? No, I I remember working with that. Is it the gym? At the gym. Yeah, I okay. remember working with yeah. that for sure. I feel like it was the last half of the gym period. Was yeah. when we started. I remember, was, Raj was doing flash work too. Yeah, 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 but that was. We, we made him do that outside the office. Was... <laughs> Even the flashing. Yeah. <laughs> so, so Donovan, you worked at Deep Blue and oh, yes. um, we had formed a relationship, our little three or four person thing with Deep Blue and we were doing some flash work um, and you were running sales? Yes. So I, um, my first job out of college was selling payroll services and then at a uh, lead swap thing. I met the guy who started Deep Blue and he was like, Hey, you want to sell websites? So I'm like, yeah, those are new. Sure. Like that sounds fun. I don't know anything about it, but whatever. And so I started doing sales and it was the same thing. It was a small company. And then Jenny came on board and um, was came on board to be a developer, believe it or not. She Amazing. was doing, wow. I wouldn't call it HTML. Like they grabbed this off the shelf program from like Best Buy to build websites. I, mean, I can't remember the, the name of it. And so Jenny learned how to do that. And so we started working there together. And then through Scott Council, right? Scott met Danny at a Cold Fusion users group uh, mm -hmm. meetup thing. And that's how those, that kind of connection got together. And then we, I can't remember. There must have been something we needed you guys to like quote something for a pitch. And I'm sure I talked to somebody. It wasn't Jeff was kind of behind the scenes back then. So it must have been Danny at the time. I, I think. Yeah, I think what started it off was that you guys had some projects already in play and you were yeah. short staffed to pull it off. And then that, that's kind of how Scott and I probably started our conversation. And then we said, well, we got time on our hands. So we started pitching in. And then I think we elevated to start help you with quotes later on like i think our first thing was we just helped you guys finish some projects that were open right because they were kind of intense because they were maybe already behind or whatever and and then we did that at first and then we started partnering a little more yeah and just just to even take it a little bit further back on on the other side of this uh, of the story right that's also when we literally lost that that you know, New Zealand contract or whatever it was. And we were like scrambling for anything and everything. I remember That's right. Danny literally buying an Alea book <laughs> to learn cold fusion. <laughs> well, I think, I think it was the Simmons manufacturing deal. We landed right after, right after that fell through. And then that carried yeah. us into the gym. And that's when we met Deep Blue soon after that. Yeah. yeah. That was your so, like, Indian designs then. Mm -hmm. yeah. Yeah, yeah. Right. Yeah. 
All right. So, right. So we were a couple, maybe a year and a half into the business. We were called NBN Designs. We weren't even called Spun Logic yet. And we right. get connected to this, this company, Deep Blue, and, and started to get a little bit of work from the company. Um, there must have been some sort of relationship forming, Donovan, between you and us um, to get you to the point where maybe you thought we were uh, a more promising enterprise. Is that right? Yeah. I, you know, I think it just built over the course of time. I don't remember any particular moment, but I do remember you guys invited us to dinner one time. And it was kind of like, hey, um, so here's the deal. We could use some help selling what we do. And I'm not sure if you're happy there or not. And I was like, sold, done. What are we going to do? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> well, like, and I think that, I think that buildup was because to your point, Donovan, I think I was in your office a lot. Like I was over there working with Scott a lot on projects. You were coding a chat room for doctors. You were I remember that. I remember yeah. that. Yeah. I still get yeah. copies of those transcripts today, actually. Uh, <laughs> there was this other, there was this other was website for I like could, I could do whatever I want. Like, wasn't there some other website for like videos or something like that? Mm -hmm. Yeah, there was a video yeah. on there. We did a few, oh, you guys yeah, yeah, super yeah. good projects. Yeah. Well, um, I remember I remember the moment um, a uh, a switch flipped for Raj, Danny, and I in terms of uh, Deep Blue and the CEO. We were mm -hmm. doing a bunch of work with with Deep Blue and. Um, we were invited to go to like a fancy steak dinner or something with him. And we thought he was going to make an offer to buy our company that he was so impressed with us. And so <laughs> we were, we were pretty excited and we went into that and I'll never forget some, some point in the meal. He, he looks over to Danny and he goes, you know, Danny, you're a really good developer. Maybe one day as you keep getting better, you could come work at my company. And then he looks at Raj and he goes, Raj, you're really good at creative. And if you guys keep working hard, maybe one day you'll, you'll be able to work at my company heading up creative. And he said the exact same thing to me. And maybe it was about sales or, or PM or whatever he said. I think it was PM. He's like, you're really good at PMing, Jeff. Maybe you can come be one of my project managers one day. And I remember we walked out of that and we're like, we're going to bury that company. <laughs> <laughs> we had some pride at least back then <laughs> and that oh, just yeah. everything <laughs> yeah. Yeah. so um I, I i remember donovan um we couldn't afford to hire you you want to share what i think is still to this day after we've all built and sold companies and done all these things the most incredible thing that's ever happened to me in my career <laughs> <laughs> yeah so <laughs> We had a meeting, uh, this is after a dinner and we had a meeting at my house and then you're like, Jenny, we can afford you, right? You can code some websites, you can help with administrative stuff. We can pay you, you know, X amount an hour, whatever. I don't think we have enough to uh, afford bringing on somebody on sales, but we really want you part of this. And then we talked about equity a little bit and Jenny was pregnant at the time. And I was like, ah, oh, you know, and I was coming off of that bad situation. So I was like, I don't know if we can take the risk. So we turned down equity. Okay. That was <laughs> maybe not smart in hindsight, but whatever. Um, and then we were like, well, we got to get creative on how we can make this happen. Cause I wanted to make it happen. And so I said, you know what, let me talk to my parents and let me see if we can get a loan from them for three months of a salary that, that allowed us to at least, you know, not be poor completely. And well, we did something creative too, where I would earn commissions and the commissions would be pulled out of that, uh, uh, you know, cushion the basically bucket. And we said, Look, yeah. if I can't sell enough in three months to make this work, then that's a loan that gets paid back to my parents, um, with interest. And, you know, my, my dad was on board and signed some paperwork and, you know, was, was willing to do it. Um, and then two months in, I think we had sold enough where it didn't even matter anymore. Like we just were off and running right out of the gate. So yeah, my parents say good job, Donovan. Good job. So just for anyone who might've missed it, Donovan's parents loaned us money so that we could pay him so that right. we could hire him for a job. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> they didn't, they didn't loan me money right. for that right. period of time. They loaned the company money. <laughs> it was great. And yes, I'm great. I'm proud to say they got their money back for sure. Um, okay. So, so you joined us. Um, and one of the first things that I think, you know, there's so many pivotal moments as I think about those early days, we just talked about one. Um, 
Donovan, walk us through the, um, the way that we got our first big client. So we were in Colony Square and this would have been mm, probably 2001. This would have been yeah. 2001. So God, 20 years ago, crazy. Um, and we had, I kept having, I had these ideas to do round tables. Like, so we could have like in a way to get people to talk with us, to see how smart we were, I guess. And we, we picked a topic and we'd have like a monthly or quarterly round table with different people to, to discuss ideas. And I don't remember what the first topic exactly was, but through, and I don't remember how we got the connection with, there was somebody from an ad agency that somebody knew. I don't remember who, I can't remember the name of the agency, but I remember the guy. And he said, hey, you should invite Catherine Way, who works at Honey Baked Ham, to this. She's really smart and could probably have some good insight. And she, I'm sure she'd want to pick y'all's brain. And so we had our first roundtable discussion with the guy from the agency, Catherine Way, maybe two others. Uh, and it was us. And of course, the table wasn't round. It was a ping pong table. <laughs> And so we, I guess, did enough to show that we were smart. And I talked to her afterwards. I said, hey, you know, if there's any things, you know, any projects that you guys have coming up, we'd love to be part of that. Let us know. And she, either then or maybe a few weeks later, I can't remember exactly, was like, hey, you know what? There is this thing. And so we ended up pitching. I can't, what was the exact project we did first with, for them? We did a lot of email I I, right no, I mean I remember we we made we gave her an offer she couldn't refuse right we we said we would build their their sort of I want to call it their back end system that's too strong but like we we basically built a, a a tool for them to be able to upload products into the website for the e commerce and right. we said we'll yeah. we'll do that part for free and we built that whole <laughs> back end for now. free just to get the account and Jenny right. did all the uploading of of images and products. <laughs> you know, all the administrative stuff there. Yeah, that's right. But it was, it was the round tabling that you brought to us and that showed me the power of networking, um, which, which really also continued to take us in, you know, in new directions. So yeah, Honey Baked, I think also gave us all the confidence that we, you know, we could go after big things like Red Lobster. Right. Um, before we get to Red Lobster though, again, Donovan and I were always the earliest people in the office. What would we find sometimes? Uh, <laughs> asleep in, in some corner of the office. <laughs> well, you know, every once in a while there'd be a meeting even that we would have scheduled and we'd walk around to the corner and look over and just make sure Raj wasn't there from the night before. And most of the time, he would, Raj would, well, what was crazy though is, so Raj would, and sometimes I would go to, we'd all walk to Prince of Wales. Yeah. Right. We, you know, we'd have a few come back, you know, rest up, I'd go home and then just, you know, whatever, 12 o'clock, one o'clock in the morning and Roger would start coding. Roger would start designing or doing flash and he would work from like three in the morning until six in the morning and then fall asleep on the couch. <laughs> <laughs> Standard <laughs> student move. Yeah. Yeah. Hey Jeff, before we get to the red lobster and I don't know if this is on your topic list, but um, I, I do remember like um, when, when, uh, Donovan and Jenny first joined the company and, and even Scott in those early days, like one of the biggest things that we learned and it, it kind of took us through the entire thing. I remember like why he wanted to get out of deep blue. Uh, it was like, can you even, you know, cash in your paychecks in time? Uh, I remember the stories you'd, you'd kind of tell us and all that kind of stuff. And it, it kind of left a, a huge lasting element to us that we would do anything, anything, to never, ever, ever miss a paycheck. Uh, just because what you and Jenny and Scott were going through. Yeah, um, yeah. And, and not, not a paycheck stuff. for ourselves. Right, right. For the team. We, the payroll, we missed, yeah. We missed plenty of, uh, plenty of paychecks, but you're yeah. right, Raj. We, we, I think you told a story about, you know, people would be rushing to the bank to try to, to deposit them, like Raj said, and we were like, we can never have a business like that. Yeah, yeah. 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 Um, ping, let's talk about ping pong for a second. Because we had okay. some epic, epic oh, yeah. ping pong battles. Certainly, um, Donovan and Danny and I. Rod, you you hung in, but um, there was a... <laughs> I, I'd get I'd get beaten by a freaking CD case. 
That's true. That I did happen. Kind of that one down. Yeah. That did happen. I think one of us grabbed a CD case and <laughs> played you with it. Um, but there was definitely like a uh, work hard, play hard, camaraderie. Um, you know, we spent a tremendous amount of hours together. Mm-hmm. Yeah, for sure. Yeah, we, I mean, well, you know, it started off as good fun, but then where it really escalated was when Danny built uh, Spun Pong. <laughs> oh, yeah. Spun Pong challenge, the challenge ladder. ladder. With the Simpsons <laughs> where, characters. With the <laughs> Simpsons characters, that's yeah. right. I forgot about that. Didn't you, didn't you code that on like a drive? Or something. It was no. a vacation. You went on a beach vacation. Yes, you were I in the car that. with you, Jeff, your family, and you were just coding it in the back seat while <laughs> we drove it's down. Like the basically, beach. right, coding in the back seat. Yeah, he would like at call the beach me, a little. Like, hey, it was like a logic. It was like a it was like a hobby project on vacation. Like it was a way to do something fun and get oh. my mind off things. Yeah, that's funny. That changed everything. <laughs> it did. We had that ladder forever. But, yeah. yeah, and then we then we started launching improvements. Then we had then we had new either. Uh, either new junior developers or people that were doing um, interns actually work on upgrading it. Do you remember that? Mm-hmm. Like sometimes, so like it was around and grew for years. Yeah. That was funny. Yeah. And you guys had lefty, like you guys had two people. You had lefty, right. Jeff and Danny. And that's when that's I right. finally, finally got some confidence. Like Jeff would always train me on how to play. And then all of a sudden I started beating the lefties. I was like, all right. <laughs> that's right. <laughs> I can do this. Then like me yeah. and Todd for a while were up there. And then I think I finally beat Danny for real. Maybe, I don't know. Maybe he, maybe he let me beat him. Not all. Yeah. Know. It's like how my kids beat me for real at cards right now. Yeah. <laughs> ping, but ping pong was such a serious freaking thing at, at, at our agency. I mean, it's like more we, than any, any other organization it. I've ever yeah. seen. Like it, we all took it. Like, I mean, yeah. I remember countless hours. I mean, remember even in, in the, um, in the office and, and promenade, like, we, we we gave that ping pong room like it was a like big space <laughs> and it was a badass big, i used to have a change uh, i used to have a change of clothes we'd play i'd sweat so much for play, play so long <laughs> i'd have to change clothes for meetings <laughs> it was we like a gem to, we used to abuse uncle mike oh mm. yeah a little bit mike, mike richards we would we would really have our way with him on the ping pong table um okay so let's talk about red lobster the um the one that got away uh, Donovan, take us through how we got involved in that and, and what that was like. So Tony Card had a database of names of, of companies that he had, when he came on board that he had, uh, you know, either talked to before, or just, he built it up. You know, he did, he did sales. I brought him on to do, uh, sales with us as well. And so, he reached out to lots of people all the time. And at one point they, we, they, we reached out just to have an intro call and they were accepting of the intro call. And so that was good. And he said, you know, guys, we don't have any projects going on right now, but when we do, we'll let you know. And so we just kind of chalked it up as okay, no big deal. And then I don't exactly remember what we did to get a call back, but then I think Tony just got persistent maybe and then they finally were like, you know what, guys, we were actually lying. We do have a open RFP right now and it's due in two days. If you guys want to pitch, like, that's fine. You know, we've got a lot of big heavy hitters that are pitching on this. But, you know, if you guys want to throw your, you know, hat in the ring, I think we may have even sent them. So now that I think about it, the reason why we got the call back is me and Tony worked up some recommendations. I think we just said, and Jeff maybe even spurred this on. He just said, you know what? Let's just send them our ideas. Let's have a brainstorming session. Let's impress them. Let's just send them our ideas. And I think they finally were like, damn, these guys are pretty smart. And so they said, all right, you can pitch it. No big deal. You know, it's for the website. Um, you, you know, we, we can't guarantee anything, but you're welcome to. And I remember I was the one like, guys, this is going to be kind of a waste of our time. You know, we've not done anything for anybody big. I mean, honey baked ham, you know, but not like a full big commercial website to redesign. Um, and I think you just talked us into it, Jeff. You know, I didn't you're have like to do a lot of it. What's that? Because I didn't have to do a lot of it. <laughs> yeah. That's right. Yeah. <laughs> you're like, guys, you guys you should do, do it anyway. Like <laughs> the experience will be worth it. So we got we got Wade. And Think Monster come up with some creative ideas and we mocked up some things. We brainstormed our butt off. And that's when we started rallying. And 
you know, we got Catherine Way to record an audio recommendation for us, which we was creative. And um, I don't think we slept much for those two days. We played <laughs> Eminem and like we just went and we put it together and we end up getting the call back to come down and pitch them. We made the finals, uh, maybe final five or so, maybe. I don't know. Do you remember? If, I think it was five. Yeah. In my mind it is. Yeah. So yeah, then we make the final five, we go down there and pitch and I don't remember exactly who we were up against all big names, like mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Some, some company that did the Corona website. Um, yeah. Real branding yeah. was the one that always won. Yeah. So but, yeah, we ended up making the finals. Like it came down to us and I think real branding, right? Yeah. We got to the final two and we lost to them. It was Mike Friedman, right? Yeah. 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 Um, but I, I have a memory of like, bringing a printer in the car to print off the proposal as we were driving down to Florida. Probably. <laughs> <laughs> I remember figuring out how are we going to plug it in? Where are we going to get the power source? Cause we were just doing everything we could to, to get after that. Um, did, so one of the things I think back to that time is that we were pretty fearless. We never thought about, you know, the company not, not working out or failing. Um, and we were aggressively focused on growth, which is probably why we were like, well, we have to go, go after that. Um, right. you guys agree with that? Yeah. Oh, yeah. We, yeah. We'd, we'd go after, especially being on, you know, anytime we were on dogs, we actually, I think it spurred us on even more yeah. uh, to go Maybe after so. it. Yeah. So I want to talk about Donovan's, um, what we refer to as his Jerry Maguire email. Um, now my memory is it came from pitching Turner South. So I'll tell that part of the story um, because I think that is what ultimately made it happen. So we went to pitch Turner South. And um, one of the things we always ask when we go into those pitches is we ask the person who's sort of the main decision maker, what are you looking for in a partner? Um, because we want to see if there's anything other than what's written in the RFP that we can tailor our approach to. And um, the woman said, well, if it were up to me, I would hire the chopping block. Um, because they're this New Orleans agency, they're super talented. Um, you know, that she talked about Tabasco website or whatever. And she goes, but we don't have the budget. So we're talking to you guys and a couple other agencies. And it was really deflating. And I remember coming back and, and us all thinking, nobody, nobody, what would somebody even say about us? Like, what, what is our thing? We don't stand for anything. There's nothing anyone could point to. We're sort of trying to do everything for anyone. And I'm sure along the way, Donovan, you were probably trying to get us to focus more as every good sales leader should. And we were really just like, we'll do anything for everybody. <laughs> and I think that is what got you going to come up with this email. Does that, does that sound fair? Yeah, I, it may be indirectly. I don't remember specifically losing a particular pitch, but I'm sure it did. I remember at that time we had come up with a, a slogan that was like our, our slogan for like who we were. And it was that we make the process as rewarding as the results. Right. And Chris Coleman had worked with us on that. And like, we, we, uh, we thought that customer service, that's our thing, man. And, and until we realized that like, you can't really brand customer service, right. You know, unless you do something so unique and special with it, that it's very hard to just say like, people like us, you know? So I, I think it was just bugging me. Um, because I write, I'm right. I'm, I've got it here, by the way, I printed it, printed it. Oh, oh, yes. oh wow. I don't have a digital copy, but it was uh, July 20th, 2002, 2002. So I was like, yeah, a week ago we were on the subject of other services we provide. I knew something was inching its way to the surface of my brain. So here it is. And it just like, boom. and I kind of was just like, what is it that we do that's anything special or unique or that makes us better? And I got to thinking about, okay, we're building these websites for people, mostly like some email stuff too. And it's like, how, what would make somebody want to interact it with it the way that we want them to interact with it, right? Where everybody else back then was thinking about the design and what we're going to say, but not thinking about the user themselves and how they would you know, even just how the brain functions in general to make people want to interact and click a certain thing that we would persuade them down a path. And so it just got me thinking about, you know, and this is before usability was even a thing. I'm sure some people were doing it, right? But nobody really called it usability or user behavior or anything. Um, uh, so uh, yeah, I just kind of had like that epiphany of like, 
this needs to persuade or, or, or uh, you know, like uh, go through everything we do, how we interact with our clients, to, to what we build, to how we build it. Uh, we should test it with users that can really test it out before we, we put it out there. And nobody was really doing this at the time. And so it, it gave us something to rally behind, which was kind of cool and, and kind of be known for. That um, and and my that was truly transformational for us, and I think more so because to your last point, it gave us all something to focus on and use the same language and build upon. And so every pitch we went into was a little bit better, and every person we hired, we made sure they were excited about user experience. And I think that changed. Honestly, I think that changed so much for us. Yeah, yeah, I, I agree. I mean, you know, we, we started. Yeah, everything, even, you know, using color theory and stuff like that, we'd use that mm -hmm. in our pitch and what motivates this and why use this. I mean, you know, uh, everything. What was funny though is, so it was like, great. Now, how do we do that? <laughs> <laughs> Google. Like, right. well, yeah. we're gonna, first, we're going to pitch it and we're going to talk about it in our pitch and then we'll figure it out from there. <laughs> yeah. Right. yeah, absolutely. And yeah. For, actually, for a while, we really had no... Well, actually, for a while, why we were winning pitches, I remember this now. I used to do wireframes and and site maps for the pitch, like yeah. all the work for the pitch, and people could visualize and see what their website was going to be. And so it kind of made it a no brainer to hire us because we already did half of the work. Didn't realize that we should be charging for that time. <laughs> yeah. Right. Yeah. Um, but at one point, because I was in. That was in Promenade when we, no, that was in Colony Square because we were we were living with Think Monster at the time. That's when so we, we were, were um, still NBN, or we had changed to Spun Logic. We had changed to Spun Logic, yes, because it says Donovan at SpunLogic.com is where this, <laughs> there you go. Little detective. Um, yeah. So Donovan, the, uh, what what's your memory of the name change? How, how we decided we needed to do it and how we did it. Oh gosh. Okay. So <laughs> the Chris, no, was it Chris that told us? I think Chris Coleman told us our name sucked. They're like, no, she was like, nobody's going to remember NBN designs. Cause it sounds, you can't even say it over the phone. NBN, Indian, Indian designs. Well, you, guys, <laughs> you guys have an Indian on your, on your team. Right. So, <laughs> um, so that launched why we need to do it. Cause when Chris said, do something, we did it. Yes. Right. And she was, she was awesome. So I remember then I led the naming process. Uh, we did a huge brainstorming um, on the wall. We had the literally like a giant whiteboard covered with all these names. Everybody's participating except for Scott council. And we're yelling at, cause like, Scott, what are you doing? He's like, I'm on my computer. I'm looking stuff up. I'm like, what are you doing, dude? Like be part of this. And he finally like, he's like, I'm doing combinations of words. I'm like, what? He was like, he's like, well, web, web and spun. And then like, we do development. So like logic, he's like, how about spun and logic together? We're like, eh, I don't know. We'll put it up there. Like, we'll put it up there. Fine. And he had some other ones. And then, yeah. And then of course the whole cracker snap thing. Yeah. <laughs> when we did it the next morning, we looked at the board and Raj comes up with cracker snap and we're like, that's it. We got it. Cracker snap. It just flowed so freely off Raj's tongue. <laughs> and then do you remember when we, we walked out, we walked, we walked out of that room and, and the first person we saw was Wade and we told yeah. him, right. And he was like, yeah. get back in that room. <laughs> He's like, yeah, no, no way. But what's funny is if anybody else were to have said it, it wouldn't have sounded so good. Yeah, just, <laughs> except for when Raj said it. <laughs> Raj, say it for us. Say it nice and slow. <laughs> Crack a snap. <laughs> I don't know. I don't know, Donovan. <laughs> I'm not sure. It sounds much different. <laughs> and then, how did we test out the, the the names that we came up with? Yes. So we. So that's when I was like, "Hey, we got this aim event coming on. We know we've narrowed it down to code word nine, spun logic, and brain stick. Brain stick. Brain stick which is kind of in the whole cracker snap world, but whatever. <laughs> we narrowed it down to those three. So we uh, each wore, I don't know who didn't wear, maybe there was four, I can't remember, but we went to an AMA event 
And so I wore a name tag that had that name on it. Danny had one. Jeff may have had the other. I can't remember. And then we had people vote on the one they liked the best. And so we would like put a little tick mark on the name tag and spun logic was it. Yep. Simple. Yep. Crazy. Okay. So then we got our new name. We got our new, our new focus. Um, we win Penske. Yeah. All right. Now, uh, Roger, Dana, did you guys ever go up to Penske? I never did. I only heard no. stories about it. Yeah. So Donovan, why don't you share the shushing story? Yeah. Well, yeah, rewind, how back we got them. rewind back a little bit. So Tony with his email, you know, his, his contacts, he, he had this theory and it actually worked where he would send basically spam email. We sent spam email to somebody high up in the organization about, I can't remember what it was. I mean, it was a well-worded and crafted email. And then that the theory was that person would forward it on to somebody lower to say, Hey, look into this, whatever. Well, the person that, campaigns these days. Yes. Yes. <laughs> but the person at Penske, uh, when it got forwarded down, which it did thought that that was like his recommendation. Like you guys need to talk to them. Yeah. And so we ended up getting in on a call with them and, you know, we did our thing and we, uh, we win the business and they are, they really like the concept of the whole user experience focus because they were rebuilding their website with the, the way to book and rent mm -hmm. trucks. And so we're going up there. And of course it's a flash. I think, I think it was flash that we decided to create this little module that, that could, we didn't have to load the pages, which in theory is still great. Right. If it was, I think, flash. I think we're using flex for the first time on that one. Mm -hmm. Oh Yeah. yeah. Um, with the so old AS4, uh, 400 or 4,000, whatever database, I remember that. It was like a complete nightmare. <laughs> yeah. And that was too when, when, of course, Todd Stalter, who was one of the first uh, project managers when we went over to Zonalite, uh, he's like, so this whole user experience thing, it makes sense, but like, who's doing the work? <laughs> like, uh, probably the project managers, right? I mean, project <laughs> managers are in user experience. So yeah, Todd, you're doing the wireframes. So Todd and I worked on them as well. We did the wireframes together. We went up to have this big meeting with them and we had to, you know, there's some older uh, executives in the room. There's probably 30 people in the room, right? When you say Jeff, it yeah. was 20. Yeah. And wow. right? Reading, older executives Reading. who aren't used to the web. Yeah. This newfangled thing. And so he would, one of the guys, I can't remember, would like keep kind of chiming in. Like he didn't understand how certain things were going to work. And I would, you know, kind of jump in and explain and sell our vision of why we're doing it. And he finally looks at me and he goes, Shh, you're not talking anymore. <laughs> I got shushed by the guy. That's hilarious. That's insane. Hey, uh, why Donovan, did he want, did he want Jeff to respond or what? Why, why did you get shushed? I think I was being annoying and kept like over talking like about this vision. And we were so excited about it for them and selling why it was so good. And, Gotcha. I, I think I oh, it was with Todd. All right, right. Yeah, and Todd so, was there. So I remember uh, one client meeting where I've never seen Donovan more pissed off and angry. Uh, <laughs> do, do you remember? It was that lighting company. Oh, uh, yeah. Do you remember yeah. that? <laughs> I didn't remember, Wait. Rod. You were there. So the three of us were there. Yeah. Oh, <laughs> I didn't know that. Yeah. Yeah. I remember the guy just, yeah, just being a complete just asshole well, <laughs> and you, you, you were was, just like he comes in the room so yeah it's a lighting company southern knights i think was the name of it i don't know if they're still around so sorry if you guys are still around and listening to this probably not <laughs> um, he comes in the room we're talking with um one of the assistants i can't remember and we're showing her the wireframes and the how we're going to redesign their site and the guy comes in, like busts in the room yelling and screaming at us what is going on? Our website is horrible and you can't see this and you can't do this. And we're like, I don't understand. We're like, we haven't even built the website yet. We may have even done comps. I think maybe we were doing comps at that time. <laughs> yeah. And so he's yelling about how horrible the website is and he leaves the room. And I'm like, Slams visibly shaking. I was like shaking. <laughs> you know, I'm like, I don't understand what's going on here. I was so pissed because we put it, you know, we, we put our heart and soul in everything we did. Right. 
Mm-hmm. And then he comes back and he's like, Hey guys, I'm sorry. I just realized that I'm talking about the existing website and you guys didn't do that. <laughs> <laughs> yes. That's why you hired us. <laughs> Oh, that was amazing. <laughs> I, I'll never forget it. I mean, I'll never forget it. You were, that was amazing. You down. We were like, dude, yeah. it's all right. <laughs> it's all right. <laughs> I was, oh, I was fired up. Well, Do- Donovan didn't get upset easily. I mean, you know, that, that guy was it took just Tony to get him that upset. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> you remember that? Oh yeah. You remember the one time? So, we did, we, me and Tony interviewed somebody for another, I don't know why we thought we were going to load up on salespeople, but we were going to hire another salesperson, I think, or maybe a project manager. I can't remember. We were focused on growth, man. How else do you grow? Just, Just hire more salespeople. <laughs> yeah. So we have this interview, he's in there and he keeps like being like grilling her on something. I can't remember. It seemed to me, it felt kind of like, you know, condescending or something. Um, and so I get on, uh, we go to our separate cubes and I get on um, instant messenger and I'm like, I can't believe he did that. What a jerk. Da, 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 da. And Tony pops up. And he goes, I don't think that was meant for me. <laughs> <laughs> well, yeah, you were a jerk in there. <laughs> he was always good with feedback though. I gotta, I gotta say. No, yeah, yeah. He was, he was, he was, yeah, I, I really like Tony. I really like Tony. Yeah. Um, what other stories, guys? What other memories do you have of those early days when we were trying to make it all happen? I know um, Donovan was a big fan of Raj's art in the Colony Square. But... <laughs> My spray painting. <laughs> cityscape. Yeah, cityscape. I remember poker games at Donovan's house. Yeah. Uh, yeah. A lot, a lot of poker, poker back games. then. Yeah. I don't know, yeah. Jeff, if you did those, but I used to go. Yeah, used to go those. Come. No. Yeah. I remember, I remember when they, they started getting bigger and bigger too. You started having more and more people. Oh yeah. I would have, I had games every two weeks, tournaments with 50 something people at my house, upstairs, downstairs, all over the place. Right. It was crazy. Yeah. No money was exchanged though. No reason to nope. dig into that past. Just for fun. <laughs> <laughs> it was just fun. <laughs> what about the, what about the parties? Halloween. Oh, oh, oh no, no. The Raj's best parties were the suited and booted. Yeah. Um, yeah. But yeah. But that that but whole. Let's, I, yeah. Let's talk about the company parties, though. Oh, we the had, company parties. Here. Yeah. We had Halloween. We had um, we had some pretty epic parties, didn't we? We did. We had some big parties. The first Halloween show. party in Zonalite, I think, I think was the best one. Probably. Where we had the whole time. Kevin Bachman and his wife were like all into the Halloween stuff. And so we made yeah. a maze when you walked in. Uh, yeah. A maze with black plastic with like. Mm-hmm you know, spooky stuff, whatever that you had to go through before you got it to the party. We had our first ice luge. That's right. And Jeff, yeah. wasn't your dad bartending or something? Did he bartended right? at, um, at a colony square event. Oh, not that one. Okay. Yeah. That, was did have ice logic, luge. Uh, that was the Spun Logic website relaunch. Oh, we did the that was. flash or no, that was when we announced the name. That's what I thought. Yeah. Back at yeah. that Halloween party, Raj, do you remember you made that thing out of flash where it was Mm-hmm. We would take them into a dark room and it was like all pumpkins and you're counting pumpkins. And then it would go, ah, and it would put a <laughs> face on there, make people jump. Like that was actually pretty worked on tons of people. It was great. It was amazing. <laughs> it was, it was a, amazing. We had fortune tellers, right? You had a fortune uh, teller. Do we? I don't remember that. Yeah, maybe. Yeah. Been a... And I think uh, mine said I was going to leave and start my own business. I could. <laughs> <That's right. laughs> we fired her. Yeah. <laughs> we're, we're really not allowed to say stuff like that. Yeah. Yeah, that was, we had a keg, we killed the keg. I, I, that was a, a lot of, uh, the, I remember it was, it was probably like the first party where we invited even the industry a little bit yeah. uh, into that party, right? It was back in the zonal light day. Well, so the one, the relaunch party, wasn't that one where we did it in the lobby of Colony Yeah, Square? yeah, that was in Colony Square. One, right? Yeah, we had a whole room that? with like remember? three or four ping pong tables in it. You're like, well, do you remember we, we, uh, we traded websites for catering? Right with remember that guy, remember that. the football guy who owns the the restaurant at the bottom of, of Colony Square. Mm, I remember. Right, and, and so <laughs> we built him a website and trade to um, cater the party. Uh, yeah, I mean, yeah, yeah. that was yeah. a good one. So um, we we took lots of trips. We 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 had an annual company trip. The first couple were ski trips. 
Yeah. And then we realized those are too expensive and also not everybody skis. So it was difficult. So we switched it to a cruise, but on one yeah. of the first ski trips, um, we, we did a dollar bet with Mike Richards to wrestle Donovan on this hardwood floor. Um, it was, he brought it up to me recently, by the way, Donovan. Mike, did he really? Yeah. <laughs> he rematch, right? Well, Jeff, what? what's that? Yeah, I say he wants a rematch, I'm, I'm guessing. <laughs> I bet he does. <laughs> um, it was the funniest thing because he would come at you and two seconds he'd be on the ground in some formation. <laughs> and then he'd get back up, <laughs> tried it again. Uh, didn't work. Yeah, the Mike dollar bets were the best then. Yeah, we had a lot of <laughs> dollar bets for him. <laughs> that was, that was uh, hilarious. Remember, uh, we were at we were at port one time from one of the cruises, and we dollar bet him to to get down into this like, I don't know, it was like hung off the ocean. It was like this area that was so nasty, and he got down in there, <laughs> and came out, and his his blue uh, swim trunks were white. <laughs> oh, so gross! Can make, I don't know. It how. like bleached them. Yeah. <laughs> he swam in it. Uh, it's so funny. It's he so was gross. up for anything. Yeah, um, he was. Okay, what else, guys? Any other stories that Donovan? You got anything else on your list? Hmm. Let me see. Let me see. I had made a list before of things I was remembering. Yeah, I went. I went through it. Um, we we spent less time on Rogers drinking than I thought we would. <laughs> well, that's, that's, see, because everyone because Donovan was drinking with me. That's probably why. Yeah, so he was still <laughs> yeah. in on it. He was on a, Very true. We all we all had some really late nights uh, back then. Back in the day. Yeah, it's yeah. different now. But that was um, that was part of it, right? Like the one yeah. thing I found was interesting, and it just had to go with like who Spun Logic was. Was we just believed that we were going to do it, like unbridled like no no consequence there was no possibility of failure we never even thought about failure it was just how do we make this happen and we would always pitch it first right like yeah because back then dot com days like nobody really knew anything so just the fact that we had something that says we built websites meant that we were smarter than the companies about building websites right so like we would just pitch it first and they're like can you do this we're like danny is that possible? Sure, we'll figure that out. No, no, I think actually Probably. we would say we would say yes, and then we come yeah, back and, and then say, we would that's true. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. That's when I started saying, I need building. to go to these meetings with you guys. Or then I was like, <laughs> yeah. I gotta start coming to this stuff. Who knows what they're gonna agree to? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> but you know, but yeah. like that it was it was constant like positivity, you know, like there was no way that we could. You know, I mean, certainly we failed. I mean, there's plenty of times we failed. Um, oh, yeah. And, and yeah. Lots of lessons. Uh, oh, yeah. You yeah, audio's you guys gone dumb. Yeah. We can't hear I'm you now all of a sudden. Yeah. Really? No. Can't hear you. Can't hear you. So it's like, yeah. <laughs> no, <I'm back. laughs> there, you oh, there you go. There you go. Internet <laughs> is, is unstable, but yeah. The positive con uh, energy was contagious throughout everything. We yeah, did. and I, I think, you know, we've we've had some videos before that talked about the culture at Spun in the early days. And I, I think some of what you're talking about, Jeff, between the ping pong and some of the epic parties and stuff like that was, I think we all had, we were all pretty tight. We had a pretty good camaraderie. We all worked really hard together. Like you said, we spent tons of time together. I mean, there were arguments and disagreements, but there was never great schisms in the group, you know, and, and uh, we always managed to figure out how to, find a solution to something or finally get somebody on board and uh you know eventually listen to each other on certain things but um that was a big part of who we were back then yeah i mean but for who we were like we cranked out some really freaking good work uh, that probably even surprised us uh yeah a lot of late nights a lot of good late nights but that was fun oh, right? man. we used back to work forever we worked forever yes. It was back then, it was, when... she was sheer brute force back then. We'd be working <laughs> until one, yeah. two in the morning, getting oh, yeah. up back at six. I mean, it was ridiculous. I could never do that I, again. I can't remember if it was Jeff or uh, Donovan. Like, one of you guys got us a, a project to build this, like, complete freaking website uh, with Flash in, like, two, three days. And it was, like, a nuts <laughs> timeline. <laughs> yeah, we just basically went after Wait, it. was that the creation one? And maybe it was the that, creation line, like built it, it was so fast. like in a week. Was, like I remember that. I think yeah. that was like we had to do it in a week. Like it was insane. Yeah, I remember that. Yeah. 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 I think um, the, even during the down times or the tough times, like 
I remember um, hiding from the person coming to collect the water jugs because um, we couldn't pay like the sixty dollar <laughs> bill, right? <laughs> but even during those times, it was it was awesome. And of course, then we had you know three or four years of doubling every year until we got to 70, 75 employees, and that was that was fun. And it was all chaotic, and it was all pure energy, but. Uh, it was a, it was just a ton of fun. So like, I don't think I could have started my career uh, better than with you guys. Totally agree. Yep. It was the best start we could have had. Sure. I mean, we even learned now, so I much. I think about it all the time. It's funny. I still even have dreams where like I'm walking into rooms and I'm like this giant office of people and I mean, I'm serious, like, and there's, there's workers and it's, it's spun logic, but there's like, it's late days or it's, you know, probably the, you know, it's really engaged at that point. And I'm still coming in and playing ping pong with people and talking about going back to work there. And, you know, like it's crazy. Cause even when it got big, it was still fun, you know, yeah, it, was it was still, still fun here. And, you know, which, which crazy is I coincidentally, and I had no idea, Ryan did a great job of hiding it from me that uh it was becoming engaged i had no idea he, i just remember oh. him like me for not having billable time and i'm like <laughs> i manage the department for user you know because i switched shift, shifted roles to you know being in charge of user experience and i had a team yeah. of like eight i think and he's asking me for all this billable time I'm like i don't understand it you know whatever so i, I found ways to be billable and then i finally um had decided to start pursuing the, you know, what ultimately what led to what I do now, which is coaching wrestling for a living. Um, but I had uh, partnered up with a friend of mine, a, a MMA gym that he owned. And I went to Jeff and I was like, Hey man, this is, this is what's happening. I think this is time. And it had been seven years or so since I'd been there and no, I didn't want to, but I felt like I, this was the time for me to do it. And he's like, you know, I got something to tell you also. <laughs> Coincidentally, <laughs> we're actually selling the company. And uh, yeah, so I got some engaged swag and I did some final work, but I never was an engaged employee. Yeah. <clears throat> fun times. Um, yeah. Really were well, fun times. They really were. Well, yeah. I'm, I'm really glad we did this, Donovan. Thanks for the suggestion. As I said at the beginning, like you should definitely have co-founder by your name when it comes to spun logic because it never would have happened without you and you you joined at the early early nucleus of the company and we're i mean a thread right through every successful moment so it appreciate was that. it was really good chatting and talking about old times but we just appreciate how much you helped 100 percent. yeah yeah for sure okay. appreciate it. it was probably one of the most you know memorable times of my life i wish i could go back and do it again <laughs> maybe, maybe start an agency day. maybe start an agency jeff think? <laughs> <laughs> we're all still young right we can still do it right we, we just yeah. need to bring back the uh the spun paw uh, you know <laughs> that's it we'd all come that's back let's, if, let's if just Danny's... bring back the challenge ladder okay right. yeah if he, if he built it we'd all just find ourselves in the building again <laughs> <I think so. laughs> all right gentlemen that was fun appreciate all of you Thanks a lot, guys. All right. Well, thanks. Thanks. Take care.